Welcome back to Expresso Live on SABC3. Now, my next group of guests have shown glimpses of what most of us would refer to as genius as participants in the annual UCT Mathematics Competition, where among 6,700 participants from 138 schools, they came out trumps. And they are joined uh, along with Professor Gilmore from the UCT Maths Department and Mr. Singley, who is also a maths teacher at Spine Road. And I have Zahid, Sean, Kira, and Khadija. Guys, welcome to Expresso. Very good to have all of you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Our own little Thank Oprah you. show. So big. <laughs> 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 Professor, I'm going to start with you first. Just tell us about the origins of the competition, <coughs> where it all started. The competition started over 30 years ago, around about 35 years ago. Uh -huh. And it was an initiative of the schools. But then the UCT, after about three or four years, took it on as the UCT mathematics competition. So it's been at UCT now for 32 years. And this is the 25th year that Professor John Webb has directed the competition. Indeed, indeed. And uh, Mr. Singh, if you could just tell me, just, just from a teacher's point of view, uh, why is it so important for kids to be doing maths? Because I know there's always been this debate that, you know, schools are drumming maths too much into kids' heads these days. Yeah, um, we've decided at our school, at Spine Road High School, um, that we'll concentrate on mathematics as a focus and science. Um, especially in our area, um, we, our students come from as far afield as Tafelsig, Eastridge, Beacon Valley, and they need this opportunity in mathematics, um, especially in our current economic crisis that mm. we have. Um, mathematics gives them that leeway to study further at university, um, gives them better opportunities. Mm -hmm. And the math competition at UCT um, brought back that passion for mathematics at our school. That's true, that's true. So, so among 6,700 <clears throat> participants from 138 schools, there was this huge competition, and like I said, you guys came out as the champs. Did you tell me about the award that you won? Because uh, the award ceremony took place on the 1st of June. What award did you win there? Well, I won this trophy. It's the Darren Tuck trophy. It's for the girl who placed best in the competition, and I came second in grade 11. Oh, wow, amazing, amazing. Congratulations. And you, Kira? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I was a gold award winner. That's for the top ten in matric. Wow. All right. Yeah. Sean? Well, I came first in matric, and can I just say that I've come first every year. I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but you've got to say this. An amazing stat about, about Sean is that not only has he placed top uh, for the past five years since grade eight, but he's also gotten a perfect score each year. Wow, first of all. Wow. Um, what, what does it take to do that? Um, it's a lot of things, a bit of hard work, a bit of luck, and a little bit of talent. Amazing, amazing. And Zaid, uh, tell me about you. Well, we won the school award for the top, um, one of the top schools for the, that participated for less than three time, times in the competition. That's an amazing achievement, I must say. And I'm going to ask, I think I'm going to ask you, Sean. Um, I don't know, you, you've watched Prison Break, right? Yes. And you've seen, there's this character called Michael Schofield, and he's, he walks around, and everything he sees in life, it kind of turns into a math sum and a math problem and geometric signs and all of these kinds of things. Is that how you guys see the world? Not quite. I mean, I don't think anyone sees the world just like that in real <laughs> life. That'd be so cool, though. But I mean, <laughs> of course. But if you try hard, you can kind of maybe see a little bit deeper than just the surface. Yeah, yeah. Professor, um, why is it so important, though, to, you, for, to UCT for the past 30, 32 years to host this kind of competition and to, to foster a love for mathematics in kids? Well, that's precisely it. I, I think Rashdeen uh, really it was warm to hear what he said because that's precisely what the competition's about. Mm -hmm. We want to stimulate the kids. We want to draw them into mathematics. It is fun, but there's a serious side to it as well. And if they can do the mathematics and get the thrill of solving a problem, which is really great, it's like catching a wave, you know, it's and surfing. Like... It really is. Dude, it's, it's uh... like catching a wave. <laughs> I like that. Kira, tell me, what do you guys actually do for fun? Do, do you guys have fun other than, you know, solve math problems, you know, on a normal day? <laughs> um, most of us are quite balanced. Like, we do maths, and that's lots of fun. But we also participate in sports. We go to school, obviously, have friends. Yeah, yeah. That's quite normal. <laughs> Which is pretty cool as well. Now, Professor, I believe that you've brought along a problem for me to solve. At this hour of the morning, it is, it is a bit early. <laughs> and I haven't done math in a while, so... <laughs> I agree with you, All right, you, yes. so how, how does this problem work? Well, it's... Um, is it on the screen at the moment? It is on the screen. There right. we go. Okay. So it so. says uh, that a clock has just struck five o'clock. Uh, when will the hands of the clock lie exactly on top of each other for the first time after five o'clock? All right, so usually how long would somebody have in the math competition to figure this problem out? 
Well, this is probably one of the medium to slightly hard problems at a grade 10 level. <laughs> and there are 30 questions on a paper, and you've got, how long is it to do? Two hours? 75 minutes. 75 minutes, not, not two hours. Okay. So you can work out, you haven't got all that long to do that. Yeah, and like, can I have a calculator? I don't, no, you, I don't you, you don't need a calculator. Oh, okay, all right. Um, looking at this, I'm thinking there's 60 minutes in an hour, right? Uh, and from 5 o'clock to, uh, the, the needle has to move all the way from 5 to 6. It's five spaces in between there, so it's 60 divided by 5 is 12. Something's happening there. Something's happening there. I've, so every interval of five is a portion of that is 12. So, oh my goodness. Oh, it's, it's, just, it's frying my brain. Uh, okay, guys, Sean, Sean, you're the, you're the mastermind. Perfect score each year. You tell me. Okay. Um, I think it is going to be... Actually, I'm not very good at stuff like this. <laughs> Actually, um, you're wait, wait, on the spot here. Take, take us through how, how one would actually solve a problem. I mean, you have to think okay. very, very quickly. Well, the, the, Sean is absolutely right. He's on the spot because a mathematician needs three things. He needs a pencil, he needs paper, and a waste paper basket. Okay. And at the moment, <laughs> the contestants here don't have any of those three. Mm -hmm. But the point is that what you want to do is set up a little model of the situation. Okay. And you, you had the idea when you were talking about the division's five, the hour hand moves through five minutes in an hour, whereas mm -hmm. the minute hand through, works through 60 minutes. Yes. So you have the factor of a 12 coming in. Yes. So you set up a little algebraic equation. Okay. And do you want me to give you a hint? I think just work it out for me. <laughs> All right. Well, X is the number of minutes you want to find yes. after five o'clock. And so you let X equal 25 plus, and then X divided by 12. And you solve that algebraically, and you get 27 and 3 elevenths minute. And I must commend the cameraman for working that out so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Thank you so, so much for that. I appreciate it. Thank you very much to each of you for being here. Congratulations, and good luck for the future. Thank love you. it, love Thank it. You. Thank you very much. So uh, lots more to come on Expresso right after the break.